Pac-Man. Have you ever wondered how this tiny little yellow creature sees the world around him running away all day from these evil ghosts? All he wants is to eat these delicious dots, but these ghosts don't want to leave him alone. Or is Pac-Man the evil one? And the ghosts are just protecting their home before he eats the power pills and murders them all. Luckily, I'm a game developer, and I don't have to keep wondering for long, neither do you now, as I will just create Pac-Man in VR to see the world once and for all from his point of view. First, I opened Wonderland Engine. I created a simple player movement so that we can control our player with the keyboard or from the VR headset. I created this movement using physics. One thing to know about me, I'm not so good at physics. And so, while applying physics to the game, I have faced a few problems along the way. But that's in the past. Now my movement system is done and has no problem at all. Next, we will create dots for him to eat. It's an essential thing to create, as we're not bad people. We wouldn't leave him to starve to death, you know? We will let the ghost kill him instead. I've created a sphere, turned its color to glowing yellow, and added physics to it. Then I've created a player component, and in this component I have written that every time our player's collider touches a dot collider, it will disable this dot smash. Let's test that. Nice! But the physics shape still exists, and it prevents us from passing through. So on collision, I will disable this dot's physics too. Perfect! And to spice things up, I've gone to Wonderland website, that will loaded the mesh particle example, and viola! We have our particles burst, that I will spawn at the dot's location whenever we touch it. Shamelessly remixed the code. Here's the progress that happened while remixing the code. And voila! Looks satisfying. Now we need a score that increases every time we eat a dot. That, I created a text, big big text, and put it high up available for anyone to see. I created a variable in the player component, named it score, and every time we touch a dot, this variable number increases, then I change the text based on this variable. Mm, nice. Now for the winning. In the original Pac-Man, it's considered a win when we eat all the dots. The problem here is that... I, I don't know how to tell the game with code that all the dots are eaten. If all dots are eaten, then win the game. Dots undefined, cannot understand what you mean. You can't understand me because you're stupid. F you. Okay, we need a way to define the dots for the computer to understand. One thought I had for this is to reference each dot with its unique variable. But that would be super time consuming as we will have many many dots. Then I thought of another smarter way. I created an empty and parented all dots to it. Then I referenced only this empty. And from the code I wrote a loop to store each child dot this empty has into a group. And every time we eat a dot, it gets removed from this group. And when this group is empty, then viola. It means that no dots left and that we have won the game. Put all dots that are under empty objects into an array group. And if the group that contains all these objects becomes empty, then win game. Ah, you mean, if all dots are eaten, then win game? Yes. Th that's exactly what I mean. You. you. I have created a panel with current score, high score, and next round button. I have then hidden this panel underground. 
and when we win the game, I will change its location to the player's location. Not only that, but calculating the forward vector of the headset, I'll locate and rotate it exactly where the player is looking. We don't want the player to wonder where the panel is, do we? Where is the panel? Where is it? Oh, here it is. And now with the new coolant. Oh, here it is. But we have a problem. The next round button doesn't do anything right now. So I have coded this button to reactivate all the dots and created an empty to reset the player's location to this empty location when we press the button. So what this button basically does is that it resets the game while only keeping the score. Unless we lost. Then this button will be called reset instead of next round and it will reset the score too. Ha. Efficient coding by copy and paste. Speaking about losing, we can't forget about the goals. <laughs> it would be stupid if someone fell for that. <laughs> for creating the ghosts, I have created a very simple AI. It fires a ray cast in front of it. When this ray hits any object named wall, then it will randomly rotate 90 degrees. If the AI hits another wall, then it will rotate again, and again, and again. And it will keep rotating like that until it finds a path with no wall in it. Now let's test that awesome code that I have written here. I believe I can fly. What the? Unstoppable. Why does nothing just work as intended? Okay, I think that I fixed it now. Um. Done. Perfect. <laughs> that was easy. That was too easy. And to make AI move out of the base, I have created a hidden wall in the middle of the base. So when the AI hits it, it will rotate and get out of the base. Nice! Stay away from me! Stay away from- Ah, it does nothing. You're not a real ghost. So it's time to make this cute AI harmful, like it's supposed to be. I have created chances, which are basically floaty glowing spheres, and whenever the AI touches the player, one of them disappears. And when there is only one left and the AI touches the player, then it's considered the lose. And I make the lose panel appear in front of the loser player, with big lose text written on it, to always remind him that he's a big big loser. And this panel also contains a reset button that, well, resets the game. To spice things up while losing, I have created a black sphere that shrinks towards the player when lost and shrinks back up when the locations are reset, making the losing teleportation smoother. Also I have added a countdown that deactivates all the movements till it finishes the count, then re-enables them again. Come on, come on, come on! Ah! Now what's left is to beautify all these weird programmed stuff. I've created a sky image and imported it as a sky in Wonderland engine. Beautiful. Wait, what are you doing here? You're not a ghost, you're just a stupid cone. I went to Blender and 3D modeled the ghost. Imported it in the engine, duplicated it, and gave each one of them its unique color and name. Inky, Blinky, Pinky and Clyde. I'm Blinky, let us be friends. For the map, I have downloaded an image from the original Pac-Man, imported it in Blender, and modeled the map accordingly. Then imported the map to Wonderland Engine, and colored it with nice immersive materials. Now let's test our ghosts in this map. Okay, moving backwards. He's not the smartest ghost I see. To fix that, I have rotated the model to look forwards. Nice. 
Now let's activate all the other ghosts to see how they will act. Get away from me! Stop that! Okay, I fixed the harassment here by changing the player's location at the start of the game. Also, I have added lights to the ghosts and to the dots and scattered them to fill the map. You will tell me, but Mo, that's a lot of lights. It will lower the performance of the VR headset. And I will tell you, don't worry my friend. I have optimized it by making a light culling system where it activates only the lights near the player and deactivates the others. As you know, everything just went super smooth. But I managed to make it work at the end. Basically, it's a collision attached to the player. Whenever it touches a dot, it activates its light and deactivates the lights that it's not touching. Ah, for some reason, that looks satisfying. Also, I want to have hands, as they are nice things to have. For the hands, I went to Blender to 3D model it. Yeah, I know right now it looks weird and super ugly, but don't worry, everything is planned out. You will be surprised after I add a subdivision modifier. It will fix everything. Wait for it. Wait for it. <coughs> it still looks weird and super ugly. Maybe if I move this a little bit and pull that here, push that there, maybe scaling that down. No, no up. No, fuck you. You know what? Now we've got hands in the game. And I'm done. Now it's time to see once and for all the world from Pac-Man's universe. Uh, and don't forget, like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you want, you too can play this game right now from your browser. All what you will do is click on the link in the description that will send you to HeyVR website where you can instantly play the game there for free. Now, let's enter Pac-Man's universe. What? Where am I? What's happening? What? Who are you guys? Why are you chasing me? Stay away! Day 3 I don't know where I am I don't know for how long I will be able to survive more Nothing to eat here Except these disgusting dots Was the programmer too lazy to create compass for me? Oh, what's that? Could it be the key of my surviving? Yes! It's the key of my surviving! I feel the power! Come here, you little stupid ghosts! I will eat all of you! Who's hunting who now? <laughs> the the power-up is over. <laughs> Could it be? Could it be that this is the last dot? You stay away from me! You stay away from me! Too close! Too close! <laughs> 